Oh, good. We made it happen. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> and, How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. Um, I've had, uh, I'm trying to think. Today was a pretty good day. It was busy and I haven't gotten any exercise in yet today. So that is still coming up. How are nice. you? Yeah. What's, what's up with you? Good. Yeah. I, I work at UPS. So the season's really, really busy because uh, of their packages, but otherwise all good. Good. All good. What do you do? Do you drive or you work in their warehouse or? Yeah, I work in a retail store for them. So like one of those independent oh. locations. Yep. Um, and that's just for a meantime, my husband's in the military. So we're kind of like, I always move around and get new fun jobs somewhere, but I'm doing this for the holiday season. And it's like, I'm packing, I'm bringing packages in from, uh, for customers. I'm taking them out to the truck. It's just, it's a lot of lifting and walking, but that's okay. I'm fine with it. Yeah. No, yeah. I do the same thing. I pick up seasonal work when uh, our uh -huh. business slows down over the winter. I do the same thing. I've worked at FedEx, Amazon, like uh -huh. I, I've done them all. So I get it. I'm there with you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. So you worked today. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And yeah. you don't have to work the rest of the night. You're free. You're good to go. No, I'm all awesome. good. I'm all cool. good to go. Cool. Well, congrats, first and foremost, on Blood Rock. Um, Thanks. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but that was your first 100. That was my second 100, actually. Okay, okay. I've done Uwari 100 miler, um, and that was in October. That was October, what was it, 31st, I think? I, I forget. It was, it was end of October sometime, uh, and, and that was a lot of fun. That was that was my first one, and I was hurting real bad after that. But yeah, so this this last one was my second, and it was a little better. I knew a little more what to expect. Okay, good. And you came in first place, second place mm -hmm. to, or yeah, first place woman, second place total, right? Second to Jeff yeah. Browning. Yeah, yeah. So second overall. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. And um, yeah. tell me about that course. That course sounds like it's pretty stout. Yeah, so the Blood Rock course, um, it is, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it was a brainchild of, um, his name's David, and he's been doing races um, with this organization or with his race company, I guess. Uh, I think it's Southeastern, um, but he's been doing them for a while in the Oak Mountain State Park, and he thought of this new course. Uh, he had had the Blood Rock, from what I've heard, he had the Blood Rock course two years prior, um, but it was a lot easier. This was a new reinvented course for Blood Rock uh, 2021. And it was insane. It, what was it? I think it was 50,000 feet in elevation change. It was crazy technical. Um, you know, our mutual friend, Laura, probably told you all about how technical and crazy it was, um, you know, rocks and, you know, crazy uphills and crazy downhills and all like scattering over rocks and like just this ridge. I remember this ridge at the end of each loop, which is 34 miles, is just this long ridge with these jagged rocks and it's so frustrating. You can't run. You can only like hike really fast. And it was a lot of fun. I actually really enjoyed it, um, but it was super tough. And it's kind of like now that I've done this course and according to David, he says, I think his name is David. I should have uh, looked, but uh, according to him, this will be the hardest hundred that anyone's done uh, according to him. And so now that I know what to, I know that this is probably like the hardest. I know like from here I can, I can, um, know what to sort of expect that it won't be as bad all my other hundreds after this won't be as bad as <laughs> it sounds like it <laughs> um, yeah wow so so yeah basically i mean your second 100 but it kind of feels like your first right it's your first is it your first win uh no i got i got first in women's in the hundred you are a hundred but I, I think i got like fifth or sixth but honestly like this did feel like a huge win to me because I've um, I've always kind of been afraid to push the envelope and push like myself to go faster and just really push it and see what I can do. Like I have done that, but I feel like I've never gained, I've never like gotten to that limit. And I don't think I was close to the limit this time. So that's encouraging, but I definitely pushed it harder than Yuwari and all my other 
races before because I have been raining, uh, running for um, a long time. And honestly, that was really due to Laura because I was following her and she was pushing it. And I was like, I'm going to keep up with this girl. Like we're going to chat and this is fun. And then nice. like, um, I think she was at an aid station or something. We just kind of lost contact. And then I just was like, I'm going to see how long I can push the limit for for this specific race and it just I just kept going pretty fast and so I'm honestly this win was it was really encouraging and um a really good win it was a really hard fought good win yeah uh, for sure for the wounds yeah it sounds like it well, yeah. what's kind of incredible to me is you're pretty new to the sport of ultra running, but you've mm-hmm. got a lot of miles under your belt. Like yeah. you've done some, some multi-day through hikes and mm-hmm. several of them, mm-hmm. and you've set some FKTs out on some big, big trails. So mm-hmm. like, how did this all start for you? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, running in general, I've always run just, you know, long distance runner. I did, you know, middle school track and I started with the mile and then I went to cross country in high school and did the 5k and then from there I moved on to um you know the half marathons and the marathons and then I kind of stayed there comfortably until I had this dream to through hike the Appalachian Trail in 2019 me and my husband did the entire thing uh the 2,190 miles and that was about 100 so days uh, I think it was five months and 10 days and so you know I, I know what it feels like to be uncomfortable to be in pain and to you know get up each day and just continue to walk and you know you're in pain and you're maybe not every day you want to be there so I knew what it meant to struggle um I also you know from there I wanted to do I wanted to do more of these two hikes but I needed to do it quicker because I I need to still make money and um be in society for multiple reasons I can't just go off again on a six-month hike again so I thought I'll just do another one another through hike but I'll do it really fast so I started playing with the idea of doing the mountains of sea trail North Carolina which is 1,175 miles and I you know, I, I waver back and forth with doing that really quickly. Um, and then I just committed and did it in 30 days. So that was an average of 40.1 miles a day, uh, for that FKT. Uh, from there I've, um, kind of done, uh, kind of tried to do more ultras and they all got pretty much canceled when, um, COVID got really bad. Um, and we were kind of like in the thick of it. And then I did my first, trail marathon and that went really well I got first in the women's then I did my first 50 I got second place overall and first in women's for that in California during the 100 mile heat or the 100 100 mile 100 degree heat it was insane that was a crazy race uh oh my goodness that was an insane race um and then you know I moved from there I did the first hundred and then another hundred. And, um, I've also been playing with more ideas for doing more FKTs, but I mean, it's, it's all built on itself. And it's been this journey of, you know, ever since middle school and I'm 28 now. So that's, that's a lot of time there to get up to the ultras, but, um, I'm looking forward to what else I can do in it. And I'm looking forward to, uh, 2022 to be full of races that I'm really stoked for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it. And so you mentioned that you're 28 years old. And so coincidentally, my last podcast guest, Alyssa Clark was 28 or right around that age too. And I told her the same thing. I'm like, you haven't even peaked yet as an ultra runner. You don't normally peak until you're like in your thirties. So, you know, Mm -hmm. you're still growing into this thing. So you still probably have a ways to go. So live it up, like embrace this. (laughs) Yeah. These are the years you'll look back on with with fondness. So, so do it and do it hard. Um, yeah. Yeah. So cool. So take me back again. I know we went through it, but like, how old were you when you got married? How old were you when you did the, the AT with your husband? It, I mean, you're 28 mm-hmm. now, but you must've started pretty young. Yeah. So I had this dream of doing the trail, the Appalachian trail in college. That was really the only pursue I wanted after college um didn't want to really jump into a career just yet I actually tried to through hike in 2017 but I wasn't ready mentally I I didn't know what it meant to be away from 
uh, family and friends that I really, you know, joined this community and I didn't know what it meant to be just, you know, take myself out of that community completely. Um, so I had to really work on myself and work on my independence and um, some anxiety during that time that I, you know, I did eight days on my own and just realized like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this on my own. Um, you know, I think I can now I'm a little more independent, but, uh, at the time it was not as independent. So then, uh, me, and my husband, we had been dating through college and we, um, about two years later, we got married in 2018 or one year later, we got married in 2018. Um, and then we saved really hard for six months. We got married in September, 20, 2018. <laughs> he's gonna listen to this and he's gonna <laughs> shake his head um yeah 2018 September 2018 uh we got married and um I just asked him if he wanted to do it and he said yeah so we saved like we were so frugal and we made it work to in March 2019 through hike the Appalachian Trail and it was a dream come true it was amazing and having him there was really nice I had a little resemblance of community we made friends out there who are our tramly trail family um and that was that was an experience I want to replicate again but I know that I can't I can't quite go on another six month hike just yet especially when I'm just getting to this ultra thing too I'm having a lot of fun <laughs> with this right now <laughs> good oh uh, <laughs> so cool um Gosh. So, so, okay. So you went from the AT to what was the next big project? And is this like, are you like chasing the dragon here from one FKT <laughs> to the next and then on to ultra running or like, is there anything you're avoiding or I don't know, do you feel like you're running towards something or running from, from something? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. And I've had a lot of time to kind of like look deeply and like reevaluate why I want to do these things, especially running for hours on end. It's like, you can really dive deep and kind of think, think, uh, deeply. I don't sure. know. Totally. Um, so I've had a lot of time to think about this and it's like, really, why, why do I do these things or, you know, what am I running from or running towards or what's my next goals and what is my end goal here, I guess, also. And I haven't really figured that out, but I know that, like, um, this might be really deep, but, like, in my life, I don't really, I care about money to an extent, but, like, I'm not out there to get a lot of money or anything. It's, like, my, my, my eyes are set on just experiencing life to the fullest and trying to just experience it fully and if that means I have to if we have to be a little more frugal if we have to save a little more if I have to get a part-time job at uh UPS to be able to pay for my races that's literally one of the reasons <laughs> main reason why I start working at UPS uh, if I had to do that then I'll do that but like my main pursuit is to like experience life to the fullest I don't know if this fully answers your question or not let me know but like um I guess like just experiencing life the way I want to um and you know it can change over time and I think when I was wanting to through hike I wanted to you know experience the east coast and meet people out there and uh, experience nature really deeply and slowly but then moving on from there I wanted to still through hike but do it quicker and it's kind of just evolved from there and like I'm, I feel like I'm fine tuning what I want in my life as I'm moving through like my twenties and hopefully through my thirties, I'm just fine tuning what my life, what I want my life to look like. And maybe this journey now at ultras from through hiking to FKT to ultras, I'm getting there closer. And I don't know that end goal, but I'm hoping, um, you know, it still involves ultra marathons and I'm really enjoying FKTs as well, even though it's a suffer fest. I mean, the, I like the multi-day ones. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully it involves more of this like pursuit of like experiencing life fully and experiencing adventure fully. I, I can still work on my running and also uh, FKTs, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I hope yeah. that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Um, and I totally get it. Like, 
the name of this podcast, obviously, is the Do Big Things podcast. And that's something that was rolling around in my head for a long time, since my early 20s, just like get out and do big things. And at the time, I didn't even know what that looked like. And I tried different avenues through different times in my life. And and to me, it was just all big things that were sort of adding to the collective of my life. You know, it's all experiences and there's no regrets. And it sounds like you're just kind of out there doing the same thing, just sort of trying to, um, you know, I asked, uh, I had this guest, Justin Simone on the podcast, and he's this badass boulder ultra runner climber dude. Mm. And I asked him like, um, what's your why? And he, and he had the best answer so far. I think he just said radical self-expression. Mm. And I'm just like, oh, hell yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And it's kind of, huh. just that's all you're saying as well. It seems like. Yeah. I, I haven't quite put a gorgeous poetic like verse like he did to it but I feel like it's kind of that same idea and I, I feel like that's an ideal with people who do ultras or who uh do like adventures or outdoorsy it's just like our why is kind of all the same it just it's just uh worded differently mm -hmm. um because I mean all my have that same mentality especially the ones who through hiked it's just like we want to experience life. We want to make this life. We only get one. We mm -hmm. want to make this life the most that we can make it. And there's a lot more people eloquent, more eloquent than me. I feel like we all kind of have that same ideals. Like we want this life to be awesome. We want to do big things. Totally. Yeah. We yeah. get one shot at this life on this earth. And so why not go for it? You know, yeah. I mean, I don't want to die with any regrets. I don't want to be on my deathbed saying I messed it all up. I just want to like, I want to go into the grave, like exhausted, sunburnt, tattooed, like yeah. just tired, <sighs> sore, wrecked. <laughs> I have a great quote for you um, that, you know, you, let me look it up real quick. Okay. Cool. I mean, what, you've probably heard this because what you said, just like basically said it right there. Let me try to find it because it's uh, pretty cool. For sure. But it kind of, it's that same ideal as like we want to experience life fully and um, want to not regret anything. Let's yeah. see, it's right here. Here we go. Life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a well or a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out and loudly proclaiming, wow, what a ride. And that's Hunter S. Thompson. Yes, my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, love I love it. That quote. I love it. I love Hunter Thompson and I love that quote. Um, I, I, I'm thankful there's people like him who word things so eloquently. I know. I, mean, that's I am looking up another quote here. Um, I hope I didn't lose you. Are you still there? Oh, yeah. I'm still okay. here. Okay. Here. Um, I have another quote for you. This is by Jack Kerouac. And okay. these were both writers around the same time, Hunter S. Thompson and Kerouac. <clears throat> the only people for me are the mad ones, the ones who are mad to live, mad to talk, mad to be saved, desirous of everything at the same time, the ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but burn, burn, burn like fabulous yellow Roman candles. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So... Okay. So going back, this is fun. I'm having fun. This is cool. <laughs> um, so going back, um, so you and your husband did the Appalachian Trail. At that time, are you just strictly hiking or were you guys doing any running? Were you guys trying to, to really tear it up every day? How many miles were you averaging? No, start? no, we were, we were really tired. <laughs> <laughs> Like the second month in, we're just really tired and our feet, like every morning you wake up during a through hike, taken, taken, uh, I mean, in perspective, it's like, you know, five months, it's half a year and it's or nearly half a year. And it's just like every day you're waking up and you're hiking with this bag that's, you know, our bags are really heavy. So it could be anywhere from like, anywhere from like, what 20 to 30 pounds uh depending on how much food we have and so we're walking every day and and that's the same as an fkt but you know you're carrying everything on your back your food your water your your camp um and you know we're not trying to do anything but just experience and just like this is our time to be together because we just got married and 
experience nature together. And I was kind of more, I, I've always had like this, um, every day I have a goal, you know, I always have a goal for the end of the week and it might not be totally defined and I might not define it verbally, but I always have some sort of goal in my head. Uh, so that was the case on dur during the through hike, but it, you know, I still tried to leave space for Jonathan mm -hmm. and I to just relax, especially him. He's more relaxed. He doesn't have a plan. He's a lot more chill than I am. And he's just like, he just wanted to hang out and sometimes take a nap on the side of the trail or on a view and stuff. And so we just really enjoy um, that time we spent together, but we also, I think the best part of the, tra uh, the trail, the Appalachian Trail, was the people we met. I mean, we had a group of six with us until the end. Um, we were a group of six, so there's four others. Um, Whole time? Yeah, especially, uh, not actually, I take that back, about Maine, we lost a couple because they were taken a little more easy but we stayed with our friend flipper throughout the entire thing um we stayed with overall six of us until the end but we at one time we had 16 people in our group wow. and you know we make friends with these people and we're all we all have this this thought we're just trying to get to maine and you get to a town you've never been to in your entire life, but you know everybody in the town. You know most of the people in the town because all the through hikers that are going north are there as well. Mm. Um, so you know everyone in town, and it's it's just a great encouraging time, and we all have goals. And it's, I don't know what it is about it because when you hang out with people when you're at their house or when you hang out with them when you're just like doing a regular hiking trip, it doesn't feel the same. It's like it's almost like you guys are kind of on a different, there's just something there when you're through hiking, it's like you guys are just family and it's, it just feels natural to be with them. And it's, there's no like weirdness. There's no awkwardness, at least with our group. It just felt like we all knew each other for years and it was really relaxed and we didn't try to do anything and anything crazy. I didn't try to run. It was just a really nice time to relax and decompress and uh, be together and at the same time we're doing you asked how many miles we averaged the beginning we averaged anywhere from like 8 to 15 and then towards the middle near the whites of New Hampshire we did about you know 20s and then we got really slow in New Hampshire and Maine about 12s average 12s and then we sped up towards the end doing 20s um, in northern Maine uh, but I mean, like I said, I, I always had these goals in mind, but I always tried to just take it easy and hang out and decompress. And I look at that time and I think, I never think that was a waste of time. That was, I should have done more during that time. I wasted, you know, six months. I never think that I'm happy with that time and how, how chill it was mm -hmm. and how many good people I met. Good. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I was going to ask is I've always wanted to do the Appalachian Trail and it's always sort of been on my list and that's been years now and I, I keep putting it off for whatever reason, but there's other things on my list too. But do you feel like your life is better for having done that hike? Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like that just the, the Appalachian Trail helped me. Uh, I, I'm not a good at verbalizing you know, my thoughts, but I would like to say that it helped me, um, put my life on like this path that I'm on right now, which is like money doesn't matter. It does matter. And I hate saying that, but it also like, it's not my biggest concern. Mm -hmm. Um, if I'm worrying about money, then I have my eyes on wrong things. Um, and it's not like we make a ton of money either but we just live really simply it kind of helped me realize like before we started getting into like getting car payments or house payment we didn't do any of that before the Appalachian Trail I'm glad that we threw hype because it helped me realize like um these things don't matter like things don't matter experiences matter and help me just I don't even know how to word it just help me I don't even know how to word it <laughs> That's right. I just, I, I think it helped me as a young person realize like what I want my life to look like for the future. Mm -hmm. and I think that's as simple, as simply as I can put it. It's just like, I know what I want my life to look like and I want it to be purposeful 
intentional is a great word um, because like the Appalachian Trail, every day is intentional. You don't have your phone to look at. You don't have time to just like hang or not hang out, but you don't have time to just like um, look at your phone and like relax like we do. I come home from work and I can sit on TikTok for hours and that's not very intentional of me. But on the Appalachian Trail, everything you're doing is an intentional um, even if you're taking a nap on trail, like that's perfect. Like you can hike later in the day at that mm -hmm. point, mm -hmm. but like, I want to be purposeful, intentional in my life. And I want to live life to the fullest. And I think that helped me solidify like why, um, I want to do that and how much joy and freedom I found from through hiking, uh, just really helped me like solidify. This is what I want my life to look like. And it also helped me like, I sound like, so like out there, but it helped me um, what's the word I'm looking for? It helped me like reinvent ideas that I've been taught my entire life or how society has told me to live my entire life. It helped mm. me, um, like rethink, like, why do I need to do this? Why do I need to do that? Like question things, like, why do I need to do these things mm -hmm. and you know sometimes I ask that question I get a solid answer and I know okay yeah that that makes sense I need to do this as a member of society or I look at this and I'm like I don't need that I don't need that in my life this that I don't know why anyone has done that so it helped me question things in my life as well because you have so much time to think out there mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. five months and you can't just stare at your phone the entire time you're hiking for you know you know, six to 12 hours a day. So there's not a lot you can do, but think, you know? Yeah, no, I totally get it. And it sounds like you have gotten to know yourself pretty well. And mm -hmm. that is awesome. You know, that mm -hmm. is what it's all about. As far as I'm concerned, like, mm -hmm. um, some people don't get to experience that ever. They don't mm -hmm. get that time to think they don't get to really know what their own personal values are. They just yeah. regurgitate whatever was taught to them. And yeah, for sure. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's so special yeah. to be able to have that time and to sort of learn about yourself and yeah. Um, and just I've wake thought up. about too. I've thought about that too, how people sometimes can get in those patterns. And I've thought like, oh yeah, that's like upsetting. But for some people, I think some people really enjoy the comfort. Like might just be like us or the type of people that go to through hikes and things and I don't know, I'm not that kind of person, but it's like maybe being comfortable and having like a car payment, like three car payments, two car payments and a house and a mortgage um, is really comforting for some people. And that's what they, they want out of life. And I don't at all. So when I say that, it's just like, no, no, don't do it. Don't <laughs> yeah, do there's, that. there's nothing wrong with it. If that's what makes you happy, you know, yeah. if you have a family and you're trying to support your family, it's honorable to do those sorts of things, sure. but yeah, it's not everybody's path. Uh, it hasn't yeah. been my path. It sounds like it's not your path and, mm -hmm. uh, we should be free to express how, however we want to express, you know? Yeah. And I, I run into this a lot where people, um, you know, either on social media, on my comment section, on my YouTube channel, or even, you know, some grandparents or parents, uh, not calling out my parents. They don't do this to the extent that people in comment sections do this. They just, you know, little mentions here and there, you know, parents. Um, oh, where was I going with this thought? But, oh, they, they kind of, um, when you tell them these things, they just kind of, you kind of think you're like, you know, hoo-ha, and you're not, you're not thinking fully. I, I think that's where I was going with this thought. I lose my thoughts easily. I'm, I'm all over the place. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that's where we're going with that thought. I'm not sure. Well, maybe. Oh, no, that's okay. I, I don't totally understand where I think you were going with it. Um, like when I was a little bit younger, like when I was like your age, I took off and lived in my truck and went and climbed a bunch of mountains for a couple mm. months. And yeah, that. my parents were like, um, when are you going to come home and get a job? And I'm mm. just out in the mountains and I'm like, a job is the last thing I want to be thinking about right now. I'm yeah, having such a living. great, this is living every single day. Yeah. I get up and I climb a 14,000 foot mountain. Mm, this is wow. the time of my life. I may not be able yeah. to do this for, I'm definitely not gonna be able to do this forever. 
and they're yeah. just like, yeah, but you got to come home and get a job. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> you're, you're, you're ruining my enlightenment almost, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. I love that. That's, I mean, that's exactly it. Like, in my eyes, when people are doing these, getting working and working day in, day out, and they say like, it's working so I can live. It's like, why don't you just, why can't you like, just live just, <laughs> but some people like to be comfortable and live. So, mm -hmm. you know, you like to come home to cable and you like to come home to a, a warm house. And for me and my husband, it's like, we can be in the van. Uh, we have a camper van we can be in the van and it's sometimes very very cold and we don't we can suffer but we're living and we want to put living at the top and obviously he's in the military now so that's a little different for him for me it's still there but you know we're very fine like putting living at the top and whatever that takes we we want to put that at the very top like living life to the fullest that is why I'm here is to do that. And if I'm not doing that, then I know I'm not on the right path personally for myself. But again, some people do that. Some people work and they're happy being comfortable. And that's totally fine. That is completely fine. It just doesn't make sense for me. And it doesn't sound like it ma makes sense for you mm -hmm. either. Yeah. yeah. And it's crazy that the trails are what teach us that. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you learn that about yourself on the trails at the Appalachian trail. You know, it's like you go out on this big journey and you learn about yourself and your home yeah. and how you relate to the world. Yeah. And it's yeah. the trails that teach us that. And it's the mountains it's, that teach me all this stuff. The trails are crazy. Like I had this thought, me and my friends, I have some really good female hiking partners. Um, and we just, we go out there and we kill it. We love hiking. And we were on a hike on the Arizona trail. We were just just hanging out and it was just a real positive time and I just thought like trails are crazy this is totally different from what we were talking about but like trails are crazy it's literally like you're walking and you have this view into nature that you wouldn't otherwise have and I think this is just kind of another like out there thought but it's kind of like to me it's like a conveyor belt for like humans to just have a have a peek into nature and check out nature and there's so much that comes from it too it's like window shopping you know at the mall it's like you're getting a view into this life and life outside of humans and what that looks like and the animals are having a great time and they're fine and the bugs are having a great time they're fine the plants are having a great time and you know walking through the seasons especially on the Appalachian Trail it's it's really hard for me to verbalize this but it's really if you're on a trail and you're just deeply thinking about you on this trail and you're out there among nature this is exactly where we're supposed to be mm -hmm. this is exactly where we're supposed to be we're not in my opinion not meant to be in concrete jungles and you know, no trees around or artificial plants around. That's just my thought. But if you just, if you're just out there and you really take time to meditate on a trail and nature, it just kind of, for me, it just came to me. It's just like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm my best self. And that's why I've always tried to spend as much time as possible on trails, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It makes total sense. And I totally get it. And I like that um, you're coming to this place in your life where you're understanding that about yourself. Um, mm -hmm. That is cool to me. You know, that's what, that's what defines cool people to me. So yeah, stay on the path and, and keep doing it. I love it. Um, yeah. Tell me about this mountains to sea trail. And yeah. did, so that came after the AT, right? Yeah, so um, that was insane. I learned so much about myself on that trip. If I learned like what I did on the Appalachian Trail, I learned like tenfold. And I haven't even quite been able to process that entire time because it was just, it was terrible. It was amazing. It was grueling. It was also sometimes easy. It was boring. It was exciting. There was so much to that that trail and that FKT. I like I said, I haven't had time to process it all. And that was in September, 2020. So nearly more than a year ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, me and my husband after the Appalachian Trail, he was wanting to get into the military. So we moved down to Florida 
with some family um, and just kind of hung out there for a while. And, you know, he did his thing and I worked as a climbing guide and that was a lot of fun to, uh, it was an indoor climbing place, not outdoor. If you can <laughs> climbing guides in Florida, that's kind of what you have. But that was a great place. Project Rock in Florida was cool. Uh, and then after that, we moved, um, he got into the military. And so I moved up to Hot Springs, North Carolina and worked for Jennifer Farr Davis. I don't know if you know who oh, she is. Yeah, of course. So my boss from a gear shop I worked at before the Appalachian Trail started uh, working for her and being her manager. So she asked me after the Appalachian Trail uh, if I wanted to work for Jen as her hostile caretaker um, at her bunkhouse off the Appalachian Trail, a guide um, as a backpacking guide for trips. And so I said, of course, I would love that because I love trails and I missed it. Cool. Um, so I did that and, you know, getting to know Jen, I, I think a lot of reasons I wanted to try the FKTs, one of it mainly due to like how I wanted to experience uh, through hiking trail quicker, um, just like the Appalachian Trail, but I wanted to do it a little quicker and see how that looked. I think that was the main reason, but getting to know Jen and like reading about her um, FKT on the Appalachian Trail um, and hearing her talk about it was really inspiring. Um, you know, I have this is off topic, but I have these women in my life that have inspired um, these feats. It's not on my own. How did I hear about the Appalachian Trail? Um, I watched a documentary and there was a girl in it. And I was like, if this woman can do it, I want to do it. And then, you know, learning about FKTs from Jen, that really pushed me to do this FKT. Um, and then learning about Courtney DeWalter. Um, I know she's like, everyone fangirls over here but mm -hmm. she, literally I mean for women she is such a big encouragement she inspires so many women she's awesome and mm -hmm. there's a reason why so many people fangirl over her fanboy over her because she's amazing and she's so inspiring um but there's these women who inspire me to do these things it's not like I mean I I think I have like some urge to do these things but until you see a woman doing it you're like I can do that too and I think that's the same for men, but like for women, it's just like, I have these role models and I want to be like that for some young girl too. I yeah. hope one day I can be like that. That is also another goal of mine, but nice. we'll see. I, that's, that's a, that's big shoes to fill for, you know, inspiring somebody. Um, so anyway, so like, as I get to know Jen, I'm feeling more inspired to do this Mounds of Sea Trail and do it quicker. And so I just get, a crew together which uh was really difficult to get because you can't you you can't just ask anyone like would you crew me because it takes a lot to crew somebody um especially for 30 days like you wake up at three and you go to sleep late because you have to you know you have to help me but then you also have to do all these extra things too right. yeah. you have to do that for 30 days there's not a lot of people who want to do that so I finally found a friend of mine whose boyfriend was worked for himself and his name was Ryan and he's great. He um, asked me if he, if he crewed me, would he be able to make a documentary about my FKT attempt? He isn't quite, I haven't heard any updates on if he's doing that still. Um, I know that he's working pretty hard at the moment. Um, so I haven't heard that, but I said, of course, like if you do crew me, you can totally film me and do whatever you need to do. I don't know if I'll be lovely because I mean, notoriously people who are doing FKT attempts aren't like super <laughs> lovely people <laughs> because you're tired and sore. Right, and, right. And Get that camera out of my face. <laughs> you know, that probably happened every single day. <laughs> I, I feel bad for that, but that was to be expected. Yeah. Um, and so he said, he would help me. And I also had my friend Rascal, who's one of my trail partners that I was talking about earlier. She was going to come out for half of it. And my mom was going to come out on weekends to kind of alleviate Ryan's stress and let him like relax a little bit on the weekends. Um, Cause it's all in North Carolina. She lived in North Carolina. Uh, so I got the crew together and got the car ready. My, my uh, Buick rendezvous, we got that all situated to put a bed in the back and um, we went out there, started on September 1st at 4, 4.50 a.m. at Clingman's Dome in the Smoky Mountains. 
and just walked for, I mean, there's a lot in that walking, but walked for 29, 30, 29 days, I forget eight hours, I think in 40 something minutes wow. until September 30th. Um, <clears throat> walked all the way through like the mountains, through the Piedmont and then through the coast. And you know how North Carolina, you know, has those different like mountains and Piedmont, but then it has the coastal section, and then it has the outer bank. So you walk up the outer bank. So it kind of looks like this. Okay. The whole okay. Uh, so that's 1,175 miles. And it, it taught me a lot about like my anxiety because I do suffer from amounts of anxiety that I've learned to um, cope with. It's not, it's not, it's healthy ways of coping with it too. Um, it's not like jumping on my phone or, you know, an unhealthy coping mechanism, like, um, drinking or smoking weed. Like I, I don't do that, but like, it's not like that. I've actually been as Courtney says, she's, she says the pain cave, but like, I've been in like this anxiety cave. That's just like so intense. And it's like, it's so intense. There's been times, sorry, there's been times when I was on the MST where I wanted to like smash my foot with a rock because I didn't feel like there was any other way out of this FKT attempt and my anxiety told me like you need to get out of this you need to get out of this right now and for some reason I thought like self-harm was the way to go and I had to deal with that straight on it was like no this that's that's completely crazy we're not doing that and you know luckily I didn't um but like I went through a lot and I feel even when I'm driving around, like, I feel like I go back to that place, uh, cause on it, there was 400 miles of road walking and that was really intense. And, you know, we'll be driving and I'll see like a road that kind of looks like I would be walking on the mountains of sea trail and like bring me back to it. And it's just like really intense feelings of anxiety, but I know how to deal with it now. Again, I don't know how to verbalize how I can deal with it, but I can deal with it. But there's, there's a lot that happened. And uh, if you have any specific questions, I'd love to answer them. Um, but there was, there was a lot that happened. <laughs> Anxiety was a big one. Also, malnutrition. I can talk about that if you want. <laughs> okay, please. Let's talk about malnutrition. But before we get off the topic of anxiety, like I like that you're open and honest about that, you know, and mm -hmm. vulnerable about saying, yeah, I deal with some anxiety stuff. And I sought out the trail to sort of learn about that and to learn about mm -hmm. myself. Um, yeah. And I just picture you out there just like charging forward and like dealing with this, these anxious mm -hmm. thoughts going on. And that's mm -hmm. like kind of a, a disheartening thing to imagine, but, but you came out the other end, you know? Mm -hmm. So like talk about that process a little bit. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't really know what sparked all this anxiety. It would just come out of nowhere. And it was really, I, just, I, me and my friends try to do the John Muir trail and, um, we got, it got shut down about 200 miles in because of the wildfires in wildfires. California. Yeah. Um, so the Dixie fire fire, I believe it was. And so we couldn't finish, but like I was on that trail. It's like, every time I'm doing these trails, I'm adding on to like my knowledge of my anxiety and how to deal with it. So on that trail, I feel like I was able, and I didn't learn this on the MSC again, this is from the John Muir trail, but I learned that like, I think I have anxiety when I'm on the trails and I get this random anxiety. It's not it's not like I have one particular thing I can point towards be like, that is making me anxious. It's mm -hmm. like the thought of bears, I'm not scared of bears, but like the thought of that is like, I'm afraid of bears and that's why I'm anxious. Like, it's not that it's, I think what I learned on the JMT, it's just anxious because it's anxiety because of the thought that I might be anxious in the near future. Like the thought of being anxious and having that stop whatever attempt I'm doing. And I think that what I'm thinking, again, I have to, you know, go on another trail and kind of piece this <laughs> together <laughs> in some way um, now that I've added on to it. But I think it, it stems from when I was on the Appalachian Trail in 2017, when I tried to first um, do the Appalachian Trail through hike, not 2019 when we completed it. 
But 2017, I had a really bad anxiety attack because of missing family and my community and uh, Jonathan and my friends. Um, and I had a bad anxiety attack that I can point towards and be like, I was anxious because I didn't think I'd be able to see them in the next couple months. Um, and I, I like hyperventilated. I had a migraine because I was worrying so much. I woke up in the morning, I had a migraine. I was worrying so much um, because, you know, that, and I got a migraine. I was like really sick to my stomach. My heart, it felt like something like an elephant was sitting on my heart. I thought I was having a heart attack, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and my body, I just learned that like my body was just like, just impacted so much from this anxiety I'd been like dealing with for the past couple of days. Um, that like, you know, I had, you know, heart pain and like migraine, I was just freaking the heck out and I couldn't calm down. And that was really scary. Cause I was in the woods by myself, like in the middle of nowhere, no friends or family around. Um, I did have some like people that I met on trail around, but you know, I don't know them well. I knew them for a couple of days. So it's freaking the heck out. And that was really scary. It was raining and thunderstorming that day. And I just had to find a way out of that situation on my own. And that was terrifying. So I think going back to the Mounds of Sea Trail and going back to any trail, honestly, that I've dealt with this anxiety, I think it comes from, this is again a thought, it's coming from that time that I experienced anxiety. And I think I have anxiety because of the thought of having possible another anxiety attack, like I did on the first Appalachian Trail through hike attempt um does that make sense yeah it does it does it totally does and yeah. i've experienced anxiety in my life too and i've experienced almost everything you mentioned right there so like it it i totally get it um mm -hmm. have you tried anything okay so you're you do the hiking thing to, to sort of combat your anxiety but what if you're not near a trail what if you're at home and you're freaking out do you have any other tactics or meditating or anything that you do to that that works for you yeah so i've i've through these through hiking i've actually come up with ways of coping that have really helped me um you know just continuing one just thinking like something david horton says um he, you probably know him he's mm -hmm. done a couple of ats um but he says it never always gets worse and that helps me <laughs> think <laughs> you know it gets it's worse it's probably getting worse but it's not always gonna be it's probably gonna be worse but then it's gonna go down it's not always gonna be worse right. and the thought of that helps me think like i'm having a lot of anxiety at this moment for like this last two hours i've been having like the worst anxiety in my life but I know from experience that this isn't always going to be the case, um, especially in, you know, tomorrow or in even in a couple hours or a couple minutes. This I'm not going to feel this intensely for that long. So having the knowledge and the experience, you know, there is the knowledge, but I think it also is helpful to have the experience that like this does go away and it has gone away in the past. Knowing that um, helps a lot. Also, um, something like physical you can do if anyone experiences anxiety like I do, you can pick up like an item, um, so like a rock or a stick or something, and what you do is you try to bring yourself back to your body and take your, like, kind of undo your brain. So you want to, like, if, what I do is I pick up a rock and I feel, I feel it, so I feel, what does it feel like, and I tell myself, I think to myself, okay, that's a smooth rock, that's a little gritty, um, and then I smell it and it smells like, you know, dirt, and then, you know, I don't taste it, but <laughs> sometimes I have tasted it <laughs> when I'm really having a hard time, and then, you know, I just think of what it feels like, and smells like, and I just hold it, and something I implemented a lot on the um, Mounds of Sea Trail, I would have my friend Rascal, um, sometimes she would help me, but she would pick up gravel and she'd give it to me because she knew I was having a hard time she could see I was in my head and I would just like I would like just crunch that gravel in my hand and just feel it and it's not like it was like self-harm or anything but I would just like feel the grittiness of it and it helped me bring my bring myself out of my mind and take myself to like this physical item in my hand um just really feel it and I know that's that's super simple but it really did help me on the mountains to see trail with anxiety. I would say those two things, knowing that it's not always going to be this bad in 
in a little bit, you're probably going to see a really cool view or you're going to experience like a really cool part of the trail. You're not going to be on this road, almost getting hit by cars all the time. Like it's not going to be this bad. And also just feeling something physical and like bring yourself back to like your body and taking yourself out of your mind really helped me. So those were my two big coping mechanisms I learned on the MST um, that I still implement today. Yeah. Those are good ones. Those are good ones for anybody listening. And, um, it sounds like when you're picking up a rock or a stick and and trying to sort of concentrate on that, what you're doing is you're bringing yourself back to the present moment. You're getting into Mm -hmm. your body and you're getting into your Mm -hmm. five senses. And I've heard that anxiety is usually thinking about the future and depression is usually thinking about the past. Mm -hmm. So like if you can get to this present moment and say, Mm -hmm. okay, not, not tomorrow, not the next day, not later, but right here, right now, I'm okay. Like everything is good right now. I'm having this conversation with this cool person. Like mm-hmm. life is good right now in an hour. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that bridge when we, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, you know? Yeah. So. That's, that's a great way to describe it for sure. Yeah. I've never heard of this depression, anxiety described like that, but definitely getting into your present, um, and it's perfect way of describing, um, just bring yourself back is yeah. it's just really important for anxiety. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So getting back to running <laughs> after yeah. the, the mountain to sea trail, like when did things start getting faster for you or was that mm-hmm. it? Um, when did, when did these through hikes become more running involved? Yeah. Um, I would say after the mountain to sea trail, kind of with Jonathan's my husband that's his name Jonathan or Sheriff is his trail name um (laughs) oh wait and you are the candy mama is that your trail name I am candy mama yeah I didn't know (laughs) exactly what that was but I assumed it was a trail name (laughs) yeah yeah a lot of people they look at my Instagram that's one of the first things they say and it kind of can give me an introduction into telling them about through hiking it's kind of my gospel is through hiking (laughs) so it gives me an in to tell them about it nice Um, uh oh yeah so when did things get faster i i went jonathan and unknown of military life um you, you don't know where you're really going we've moved i've moved personally three times in the past two years since he's been in the military so it's not really we don't really know where we're going next i we know we're we're going to virginia that is the next stop is norfolk um but doing these races i felt like i could do a race i probably can't you know, do a through hike, um, especially with him, or uh, I can do an FKT, but I just thought, like, I wanted to see if I could do 100 miles. I remember reading about Diane Van Duren, who held the record of the Mounds to Sea Trail uh, before I broke it, and she was a professional athlete for North Face, and she did 100 milers, and I thought, what the heck, she does 100 milers, how am I ever gonna, how am I ever gonna beat her in the FKT, she does 100 miles at a time, (laughs) and I thought that was impossible, so I think I knew I wanted to get up to 100 miles and just see if I could do it, Um, also learning about um, Courtney DeWalter, hearing her story of Moab 240, um, and how she beat everyone by 10 hours was like, women can do this. And it's not like I, I'm out there. My goal isn't to beat the men, but if you're a woman, if you're a woman, you know, it's like, I can do this. There's this woman that can do this and I can be really good. Um, and I can be one of the best. I'm saying that for all women, like seeing Courtney, what she did is like, you can be the best. And for women, we aren't the best physically like we aren't ever the best Mm -hmm. um physically I'm I'm gonna say that because it's true like we're not the best at weightlifting we can't you know power lift more than men um we can't you know run faster than men in a hundred mile sprint there's just or a hundred uh yard sprint there's just things we can't do better than men but the fact that women are able to do this racing this ultra racing this long distance racing better than men it's just like that's like exciting it's like I don't know I don't know I don't know what it is it's not like I'm out there to beat the men but it's definitely intriguing when you hear somebody is doing that really well and it's a woman yeah um so definitely hearing about her I was like that is inspiring I want to get out there and try it um and 
I think when I really started getting faster is when I started taking it seriously when I lived in San Diego and um, I uh, got a coach and uh, Carl Meltzer and he's great. I have really benefited from him a lot. He's so knowledgeable. You know him. Everyone Mm -hmm. knows him. Mm -hmm. And he's super inspiring and he pushes me. Like I've had coaches in the past, you know, they, that are not as knowledgeable. I've had coaches like um, high school and college. So it's not like their main purpose is to like coach you as a person. So maybe there's some to that, but also Carl is like, he pushes me. He's like, if I'm, you know, if I'm having a bad day, I have my have in the back of my head. Like if I tell Carl, I didn't do this run because I was having a bad day. He probably would say like, that's not like, not that that's not good enough. He would probably ask me why, but like, for him, like you just get out there and you do it. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's just, just kind of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Straight up guy. Like you just do it. Mm-hmm. Um, no questions asked, just, just do it. And just very forward and direct and simple. It's very simple. Just do it. Just get out there, spend less time at aid stations, run quicker, like, you know, run when you can just try to run. And he's just very simple and he's also like direct and you want to make him proud. So I think I started really getting faster when he became my coach and I wanted to like, I guess, um, make him proud, but also like a couple other friends have made an ultra running. So I want to make them proud, um, as well. And I think I've, I I hope I've done that, but through that, I feel like I've made myself really proud. And that's kind of the end goal there is to be satisfied personally with myself. Yeah. But I had to get some inspiration first from somebody. Yeah. No, there's nothing wrong with that. And yeah, at the end, it's just what you think about yourself. Am I happy with my performance? Even if Mm -hmm. my performance sucked, did I give it a hundred percent? You know, then I can Mm -hmm. still feel good about that. Mm -hmm. I totally get it. Um, So Okay. So after the mountain to sea trail, was there another FKT or another long through hike after that? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I kind of had two fails back to back with the FKT through hiking, um, with, or with the John Muir trail, we, um, tried to do that. That was an amazing, oh my gosh, beautiful, beautiful land. We were having a great time. I was like, on fire for nature and the trails and like California because I'm an east coast girl and I Mm. used to the Sierras oh if you ever have a chance to do the JMT or even just a portion do it because it's amazing Mm. um we were getting our stride we had about we're we're about 100 we're 180 miles in I think and we were on track to finish on my birthday, and then we got, we were in Bishop restocking, and we heard the word that they were shutting down all California parks, I believe it was, national parks, national forests, national forests, that was it. Um, and we were, at that moment, going to be in a national forest, so we just knew we couldn't finish And I saw, you know, what's really upsetting is I saw somewhere on Instagram, somebody correct me if you can, or you correct me, that like, you, if you had John Muir Trail permits, you could still finish, because I saw some people finishing still, and I got really upset when I saw that, because we got off, because we thought this was the right decision, if like, the Forest Service says, get off because of fires, we don't want any more impact to the land, I'm going to take that seriously and get off. But some people finish and I was, I was bummed. I was like, dang. <laughs> right. Wow. I don't know. Somebody correct me if that, if you could finish with a John Muir trail permit. Anyways, so we, we had to get off. We ended up hanging out in Flagstaff for a day and doing the Arizona, some of the Arizona trail, which was fun. Go, good girls time. And then uh, in October, early October, I came back. I moved to Florida, um, where my husband's, where I'm now in Panama City, and where he's based. Um, he's at the dive school right now. And so I wanted to do the Bet McKay Trail. And I had been 
wanted to do that for a couple, maybe like six months and had been planning it and went out and did that with a great crew, my mom and my, our friend Flipper, uh, that we finished the Appalachian Trail with. Hmm. And it was a great crew. We were on fire. We we're doing great, but there's a couple reasons that I stopped the second end of the second day. Um, I was keeping on track with miles, but started getting this really bad hip pain and like groin pain. It's like something pulled and every step was so painful. The weather was terrible. It was just raining every day. It was just like so bad, like downpours. I'd get downpoured and that's nothing. Like I can deal with that. But on top of the hip pain and also on top of um, this other thing, which was Brian Laundry, that whole thing with Brian Laundry. And this was totally me and blowing it out of proportion. And my husband and my dad were reading up on it and they had found somewhere that like somebody said that he was in the Smokies. Somebody like spotted him in the Smokies near the Appalachian Trail. And, um, you know, obviously we all know that he wasn't there, mm -hmm. but when you're by yourself at 12 AM by yourself on a dark trail, you're a woman, um, it's pouring rain and you hear some weird noises. You can really blow things out of proportion and really, I mean, anxiety really played a role in that for sure. And I think that was, I wouldn't say it was a fail, but it was definitely a uh, moment where I let um, my thoughts run and kind of judge where I went with the FKT attempt because I got nervous and I, I didn't, one, I didn't want to be out there by myself. Um, and maybe he was out there, maybe he wasn't, but I also didn't want my mom, Flipper was about to leave. I didn't want my mom out on these back roads by herself, um, possibly running into somebody who had been maybe, who had maybe killed somebody. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that. Um, and so hip pain, you know, the rain, and just, just that whole, that whole situation just made me think that maybe this isn't the best time and maybe I can, you know, try again when it's a little, little better, a um, little better. I'm a little more used to these miles. And my hips don't hurt so bad after these hundreds, which is good. Um, maybe I'll try next year. Hopefully I'll, I'll try again <laughs> next year. Yeah. But I, I did learn a little bit during that time. Um, I, I wouldn't say that was a fail by any means. I felt perfectly fine with stopping. Good. Good. Yeah. And you shouldn't, yeah. you shouldn't feel bad about it. You know, like there's two sides to the spectrum. There's the David Goggins mindset. Like I'm never going to quit ever, ever, ever. I'll crawl until I am on stumps and keep crawling. And then there's other people who are like, you know, quit. Yeah, definitely quit. If you're not feeling it, don't do it. Come back and do it another day. And I guess I'm somewhere in the middle of that spectrum, but I, I, I totally get it. And it sounds like you made the right decision and that trail yeah. is not going anywhere. You can always come back and, and try it again. I know. It was incredible. If anyone, again, Ben McKay is another short through hike. If anyone is looking for a through hike, is inspired by this through hiking thing, Ben McKay and John Muir Trail are great, great trails to do in like two weeks to a month. Do you know TJ Pitts? That name sounds very familiar. Is he a Benton McKay? Yeah, he set uh, the FKT and the Benton McKay. Okay. I had him on the podcast. Oh, and, cool. And Abby Hall is uh, the one who set the, the FKT and the John Muir Trail. And I know oh. she was out there during some fires. And she, I had her on the podcast. And she actually saw a UFO out there, too, that was like almost like following her. <laughs> it was it was a crazy story so you should no check that way. out yeah. i gotta check that out oh yeah. my god no abby way. hall yeah she's she's no. awesome it was a great story no way oh my <laughs> gosh i gotta check that out i just got chills <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know she was out there during the fires and uh yeah at one point she looked up and there was obvious this very obvious like ufo up there and she turned her headlamp off because she was scared but the thing kept following her on the trail for like quite a while if i remember right oh my gosh i want to cry that's so scary because <laughs> i know how that feels to be out there by yourself <laughs> by yourself yeah totally oh yeah Poor girl <laughs> And speaking of like, while I'm name dropping, um, I'm, and I mentioned the podcast right before you, it just came out today. Her name was Alyssa Clark and you should look into her too, because you guys are about the same age doing the exact same thing. And you're both military wives and both your husbands mm -hmm. are out like, and you guys are kind of moving all over the place and, and just doing your running life. So you have yeah. a lot in common with her. You should check her out. 
I've heard that name too. Um, I'm not great at like, I, I think I'm good at social media, but also sometimes I'm not. So I, I need to write that down right now so I don't forget because yeah. she sounds really cool. Totally. Um, and yeah, so you mentioned that you have a YouTube channel as well. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, it's called Terra Tracks. And I, I essentially do a lot of things on the Appalachian Trail. Um, I'm trying to do more ultra running and more FKT based things, but there isn't a huge audience on it. So I'll spend months, not months, like weeks working on these videos and like I'll get a hundred views, which I'm not about the views, but also it's kind of nice to <laughs> work really hard on a video and get like views or have it turn over to views. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot of things based on the Appalachian Trail, which I still enjoy, I still love making that content. And I love the community. So connecting with the community on, on YouTube is one of my favorite things uh, to do online. Oh, yeah. I do it on Facebook as well. Um, yeah, so YouTube's pretty much my like steady thing I've been doing since 2019. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so you just did the Blood Rock 100, and that was the latest. Was that yeah. last weekend or two weeks now? Or? Yeah, not last week. It was, yeah, two weekends ago. Okay. Okay. And yeah. how recovery going well? Like you moving around, you back to running again, or what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing just fine. I want to get back out there soon um, and do a couple runs, maybe just like some fun runs before the holidays. And then after the holidays, I think I'm going to start training again. Um, but yeah, next year? Uh, next year I have a couple of races. I, let me try to think on the top of my head. I have a bunch of hundreds but what i'm really excited for is the run rabbit run oh, cool. um, yeah so i'm really excited for that one because it's in colorado and then i have the umstead 100 i want to do the mst 100 which is on the mount to sea trail mm. Mm. um i want to do cruel jewel i have that one mm. on my cool. lineup yeah so i have a couple good ones on the east coast i'm looking to uh put a couple on more on the schedule though yeah. gotta work a little more at UPS though before I do <laughs> I get it I'm right there with you I've done cruel jewel that's a cool race um I had a lot of oh, fun yeah? there yeah and run rabbit cool. run is up in my neck of the woods I live in boulder so if you need a pacer look me up I'd be happy to come out and, and get you to the yeah. finish line oh for sure yeah, yeah I think Laura Laura mentioned that she would be down too oh, so cool be neat Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, how did you meet Laura? She was, was on the trail. She was, uh, she did the blood rock. Yeah. Um, she was at blood rock and she was like, I never have women that are like in front of me. And she just went out there with this crazy, awesome pace. And she was killing the uphills. And she was like, I was just like behind her watching her at one point, And she was just like killing it up the uphills. I was like, girl, I need to get to know you. So I like came up on her and like, we started talking, we ended up talking for like, I guess an hour, an hour and a half, but it was some of the most inspiring like conversations I've had on the, on like an ultra. I haven't done many, but like just being with her and like seeing how crazy her pace was and like inspired me to go faster. Again, these women kind of inspire me. And she was one of those, she probably doesn't know. And I don't want to like embarrass her or anything, but she really like meeting her out there was like, super encouraging that's cool she's a badass yeah. i've had her on the podcast too for anybody oh. listening yeah her name's laura yeah. kaplan and uh yes um she's she, pretty cool <laughs> she did uh, uh sort of a i guess it was supported but from boulder to up to long's peak and back mm -hmm. it was like over 100 miles she did it with a buddy of mine um, yeah, yeah she, she's just out that. every weekend doing stuff so yeah she's super cool yeah, she's pretty cool. She told me about a couple projects she has coming up that sound uh, really neat. And I'm excited to watch her. Uh, she posts on Instagram. I'm excited to watch her do those. Yeah. Well, I'm glad she sent me your way. So thank you, Laura, yeah. for sort of hooking this conversation <laughs> up. But um, what a cool story. I'm glad yeah. that you're being open about your anxiety and doing, you know, using positive ways to sort of manage it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I think that's inspiring to people. And I think people need to hear that. And you're inspired by women and other women will be inspired by you for sure. I like, so. 
you never know who's watching or who's listening, or, you know, this conversation is going to go online. It'll be out there for years, maybe mm -hmm. some years down the road, someone will find it and it'll help them. So just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. I think it's, it's really cool, Tara. And I think it sounds like you're a badass runner, like coming up in this world. So just keep it up. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. That's all really positive things. Uh, gassing me up here <laughs> for sure yeah well stay in touch and yeah if you come out for run rabbit run uh you need a pacer look me up i'd love to come out and, and work with you and laura and we'd, we'd have a blast staying up all night yeah. um that race is my only dnf so that's still on my list i have to get that one done at okay. some point but um yeah you're gonna have a blast at cruel jewel so yeah, yeah cool. you got a great year coming up have you yeah. ever thought about getting into the 200 mile distance yes um I've always had this thought in my head, like there will be a point in my life that I cannot run miles like consecutively FKTs. That's one thing. Cause you sleep in between, but like, there'll be a point in my life where like, I cannot run a certain amount of miles consecutively. And with that thought, it's like, I do want to get into, I want to see how far I can go. Like mm -hmm. 240 is definitely one I want to do of, you know, a distance I want to do. I just don't know what that looks like at all. Sure. Well, it sounds like you're built for it. It sounds mm -hmm. like that's what you're made for. Like mm -hmm. you're good at the through hiking. You're good at hiking long, long distances. You're good at adding running into it. You're good at hiking vertical. Mm -hmm. um, by the time, you know, I had, uh, I just keep name dropping. I don't usually do this, but I had Michael Vierstig on the podcast. Uh -huh. and he had the FKT for the Arizona trail huh. and he really, really had to push it in order to get that done in, in the allotted time. And then when he got to the Coca Dona 250, for him, it was like, this is just 250 miles. Like, that's easy. I can knock this out in a couple of days. Right. And he ended up winning the race. Wow. So, yeah. It, and so you're just built for this, the long distances. So, yeah, I see 200s in your future, probably. So okay. that's <laughs> yeah. encouraging. Yeah. Well, just keep it up. This was a cool conversation. I had a blast and, and oh, stay in touch. You. I appreciate yeah. for having me on. It was great and an encouraging conversation. It's always fun to talk to somebody who kind of understands that whole mindset we were talking about earlier and also ultra races as well. So thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Anytime. Well, yeah. Thanks so much. Have a great night. Yeah. I appreciate you. Right. Yeah. Have we'll a see good you, Tara. One. Bye. Bye.